Let's go. Hello. Welcome to beautiful Asian South Carolina for our facility search consortium and site remediation committee meeting. Yeah, that's the word. Um, I'm glad you're all here. And first, we're going to hear from Avery for our status update. I don't actually have a huge update for you all since I mean we just were together two weeks ago. But I do have um, some updates on the um, wildlife hunt numbers. And the final hunt of the 2018 season will be tomorrow. So these numbers have changed slightly. But um, they're the last hunt before tomorrow was December 7th. And as of that date, the total harvest for this year was 265 deer, uh, 60 hogs, and 14 coyotes. So um, I know the hogs are always a topic of interest, so making a teeny dent <laughs> in the population there. Um, but uh, so that was really the only update that I had. Not, not a lot has happened in the past week and a half, but uh, Gil? Can Doug come out and study all that for us? <laughs> Doug cannot. How about Julio? Definitely not. <laughs> Possibly. <I'll believe> <laughs> um, but I do have um, Karen Vangelis is here, and she has compiled all of the comments from the um, annual site environmental report uh, surveys that you all did at the last meeting. And she has compiled them all with answers and has them all in a nice, neat spreadsheet. Those comments came from the full board, so we're going to email the responses to everybody, but if anybody had a question on your survey card or has thought of a different question that you'd like to ask Karen, she is um, available to answer any questions. Otherwise, we'll send that information out to every, we'll get, we'll get it to James and James will send it out to everybody. Um, does anybody have anything specific for Karen? I know you'll discuss the ACER later on in your agenda, but she's, and she'll stick around for that too, but anybody wanted to ask her question survey related or anything thought we'd offer that up Gil's yawn and note takers okay um, I guess that's it for me thanks thank you Avery um, so yeah now we're gonna discuss our themes that we talked about at the full board meeting the first of which being Acer. Anybody? individual uh, exposed to more than 100 milligrams at the site? Karen Vangelis, this is the information you're given is related to the public. So I can respond to that. From a public perspective, no. You may be asking for a worker dose. I don't have that information. Okay. So to evaluate the effects into the community, no one would be exposed. Would we know the maximum dosage uh, a member of the public has ever experienced at the site? From our calculations, we can go back into the annual. No, I mean an individual incident or anything uh, like that. 
as far as I know from looking at the old ACERs, there has not been an instance where we have gone and done an evaluation for one single no need to do such because in the DOE orders there is um, guidance for when we would go and do further investigations. Makes sense. Doug? Yeah. Uh, Doug Howick, uh, CAP. Uh, with that being said, um, so there has never been an instance where anyone from the public has ever said that uh, I have been exposed, I think, and uh, they uh, would like, um, I guess, someone from the site to look into it, or they... Uh, now, I do not know of an instance. I've been working on the ACER for five years. Right. Um, and in our re ACER reports, I have not found an instance where that occurred. That, that's all I can give you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I should go back? Yes. Okay, I can do that. It's, it's exercise. That's how it works. Anybody else? Seeing no more. How about Bobby online? Yeah. I don't have any questions. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, seeing no further questions or discussions, we will move on to the environmental management systems presentation. I bet she pressed too. How much you want to bet? I hope so. <laughs> Did you press two? Did you press the job of putting together the summary so that it's easy to understand? What's some of the feedback that you guys gave it on the survey? Not knowing what the survey questions were. It doesn't matter what the survey <laughs> questions specifically were. I mean, they, the survey questions was asking about your input and, and thoughts on the summary itself. So think back on what you, what you read. Dan, you're reaching for your microphone. Doug was. One of the two of you. You're very talkative today. Let's go. Okay. Doug, Doug, Doug Howard Cap. Um, what I what basically said was that, that I thought it was a, a very uh, user-friendly document mm -hmm. that was very easy to, to read, and I felt that the public, you know, could take a document like that and understand it, you know, with, with very little problems. So as long as they keep producing it like that where it's, you know, very uh, – clear and concise, uh, but yet, you know, it uh, can be understood by all of the public, then I think they're, they're doing a, g a good job at, at what they, they're trying to achieve. So do you say it's one of the more accessible site publications? Yeah, okay. I do. Mm -hmm. Dan? Uh, Dan Kaminsky, CAB. I think I actually or surveyed twice. Because I think I jumped right out of the gate when I received an email, but by the time the cab came around, I couldn't remember if I did or didn't, so I made sure I did. That's um, okay. I concur with what Doug had to say. Uh, it's an easy document to read. Uh, made it in a very interesting format. I, and then, of course, uh, if anyone wants to pour over the details, that was all readily accessible in the bigger document. So mm -hmm. I think it was an excellent job. I concur as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but all, I mean, I'm in that, I'm in that kind of mood today. But um, all seriousness, um, I think the, the report is done extremely well. Um, it's well put together. It's easy and digestible for me. I'm not going to say us, but for me, which is, that's saying something. Um, <clears throat> and then the thing that I do like about it when I, have had conversations with people that may have some issues with it. Um, the issues have all been science-based. Well, I'm not in a position to 
have a conversation or debate or argument um, about the science aspect of it. But I see that as a very positive sign. If the debate, if the debate around the ACER falls upon scientific lines, then we're really not debating the ACER. We're debating the science. So I think um, if that, James, if anything goes back, that the report itself is very strong. Um, the issues that the issues that I have been in encountered have all been based on how the findings are accumulated, not uh, the actual report itself. The report is easy, understandable, and I mean I know I said it at the full board meeting, and I'll say it again here: the football analogy worked extremely well <laughs> for me, and I think it works extremely well in our area. Georgia, the University of Georgia football is pretty pretty popular. Georgia Tech's pretty popular. USC is bad, but they're pretty popular. And Clemson is Clemson. But um, yeah, I see you back there. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, so I think that's something that is an analogy that we all can we can all dive into. So I think we've worked good. So just to make sure that I understand what you're saying, when you say you know, science based critiques, were those a lot more along the lines of like you mentioned, like how sampling is conducted or the number of samples. My science, my scientist says this. Your scientist says that. My scientist is right. Your scientist is wrong. Okay. Um, and I'm not in a position to. Fair enough. Yeah. The report is the report, and these are the findings. If you want to say my scientist is right and your scientist is wrong, uh, it's not really an ACER report. It's really not an ACER report discussion then. Right. Okay. So that's what. That's that's where I'm coming from. Got it. Bobby. Not Eleanor. No, Eleanor, sorry. Eleanor Hobson Cal. I think it is a very extensive report. And what is the magnitude of the distribution of this report? So Karen, can you speak to that? How widely the summary is distributed? Well, as you know, the um, summary is well, the entire document is online. So it's widely available. Um, we're still working on trying to figure out what is the best mechanism to get the summary reports out to the public. Um, of course, we give them to the cab. Um, and I've actually started um, s some of, I'll go to my doctor's office and I'll ask them, would you take a copy? And I'll leave them in places where the public can access them because they are public documents, but we are working on that mechanism. so. Any input you may have to how we can better do that, we would gladly take your ideas. I have found it quite valuable, even in the classroom, at public school, when students are working on science fair projects. Now, we used to send a co copies of the full report. There were, when we stopped, there was no request for those to continue because we were sending them to several of the public school districts. So I don't, we didn't get the feel that they were being used or wanted. So we did stop that. Um, I'm, again, I'm not sure what kind of mechanism we could use to find out if there is input, if someone would like them. So we could send at least the summaries out. They are quite valuable. And did you mention that it's online? It is online, and all of that them. that may be the reason you're, you're not hearing requests, not just Could hearing be. requests, because a lot of information is used by students when it's online. Could be. Th that's good. Good feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, Avery Hammett, DOE. Uh, we also did do a press release, and we do every year do a press release, and it's put out on social media. And is, is that a link? Oh, sorry. <laughs> the link is put out on so on social media, there is a link um, to the report. And um, we did give a stack of the summaries to Megan Winsler with SREL, who's running the REMOP program. And so she's going to get it out to the people um, that are working with REMOP in Burke County. So that's another, um, another this year at least, another avenue that's yeah. getting out there. So keep up the good work. Doug. Uh, Doug Howard Cab. Uh, I have a great idea how you can make it better the next time you uh, produce it. Uh, put a Seattle Seahawk helmet oh on there. <laughs> <Golly. laughs> 
You will have no problem. <laughs> First round loss. Uh, Joyce. Dan. <laughs> order, order. Um, Say Chief. <laughs> I'm lying, so I have nobody to root for. Think of that. So the Seahawks Chief. They leave their win. Oh, let's so let Dan. Now we know you're true. Let's, let's let Dan go with his comment <laughs> on the <laughs> agenda item. So just curious, um, so we've had it online for a number of years. Um, do we know the number of hits or uh, how many times someone clicked through in Facebook? We don't have that information. Um, we can get it, but what we find out is, <laughs> truthfully, a lot of us, when we want to go and look up information, we go to the online source because it's so readily available, so a lot of those hits are going to be us <laughs> going back and looking at it. So no, but that's good to understand. Yeah. I, I know the whole um, Facebook and social media aspect of everything these days I work for a company and we try to push all that when you go look at our YouTube videos, like eight people see the video <laughs> and, and, uh, and I know how much they cost to produce, so s at some point you have to scale it back to the appropriate level. We've um, looked at hits on the web page, but n I have not asked about the Facebook or Twitter Yeah, it's not super important, I just, yeah. I just feel like maybe you should look yeah. at that to see if that could be a an indicator saying that people are mm -hmm. accessing it beyond internal. That's a great idea. So I'll, I will I, I will check on that for the other. And then accounts. the the remop, I think that's just fantastic because uh, those folks obviously have concerns about what's going on at the site, and it's a wealth of information for them to digest and hopefully put it into context. Um, and one other question. Sorry, I did have one other note on that. What was going on there? Uh, on the teacher side of life, um, if. You're sending it to general mailboxes. You're kind of uh, hoping internal mail gets it to people who are actually interested. Have we targeted maybe earth or life science teachers to uh, get it in the hands of people who may have an application within their curriculum? We were not. We were sending to the principals. Okay. It's kind of Fair hard enough. to get to identify all the teachers. That's the superintendent's my neighbor, so if you like, I can okay. put a bug we can in do that. <laughs> Calling on to me, to myself. Um, Stella Sekirko, DOE. I also wanted to uh, mention that um, Karen also provides us uh, copies for the environmental justice meetings for the stakeholders there that are, um, so it's uh, it's information that we're getting out as, as much as possible. Okay, I have a question. Um, Joyce Underwood Cab. Is there any value as far as like getting information out to sending like one of those mailings, like whenever people are running for office, hey, the ACER is out, you can find it here, here, and here. We, we used to do that. Um, and re see, uh, it had, <coughs> if you would like to request a copy, this was in the old days when we printed copies, we got, we received very few back requesting copies. Okay. It really didn't work. And then we had to keep up to try to figure out if people were still where they were, mm. and it became a real logistics challenge for us. Sorry to jump in on that idea. <laughs> Whenever you send out the press releases, is, is, does it wind up in the newspaper and they say you can find it here, here, and here? I'm not public relations. Oh, I, okay. I know they send it out. Maybe Avery may have some information regarding that. Um, from the DOE side, how they proceed. But we do send it out to the media outlets, whether they put it in their papers, and I don't know if they okay. do. I think um, we saw it once this year, but then again, I wasn't going out and looking for it. Are you aware? Mm. Okay, um, that's all my questions. Anybody else? Bueller? Raider Nation? No? Okay. Raider Nation. You guys want to fight about football? <laughs> well, the Raiders don't fight anybody. I know. It's an underdog. Gotta love an underdog. Okay, so uh, moving on to the overview of the SRS environmental management system. Yeah, that's what that says. Um, 
Anybody have anything? Dan Kaminsky, CAB. Um, when I took notes, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see the PDCA cycle being used. Um, so those of you who don't know, PDCA stands for Plan, Do, Check, Act. And it's basically a repetitive cycle of events that you plan, you go out and execute, you check to see what you did, and you act on the results. And you plan some more, do, check, act. So it never stops, always goes. So uh, it's very rudimentary in philosophy, but yeah, even Gil can get it. Um, so it's good to see that you have a very well-known, at least by industry standards, um, methodology. I'm sure you have other tools that also uh, are similar across the board. It was also very pleasing to see the maturity level of EMS. And um, that being said, uh, as a citizen, as a member of this board, I've been very happy with everything that I have been coming across. There have been very few instances where made me second guess uh, the site's ability to protect us all and to fulfill the EM mission. Um, so, and even those concerns have been more than adequately addressed via questions and the open forum that we enjoy uh, with the CAB. Um, I believe in, in some of my notes that, uh, that SRS does a, an excellent job of monitoring and trends are addressed and trends are analyzed. Uh, we've got a lot of data and, um, and, I, and I feel that that data has in general been put to very good use in spotting any trends and to um, take actions where needed. And, uh, and then the one last comment I had in there was that to me everything really seems adequately covered uh, from a holistic view of how things are going and being managed on the EM side of life out there. Joyce Underwood Cab. I had a question about the oyster shells. Um, what is the quantity and the cost of that? Ted Millings, SRNS. Um, I've been trying to run that down. I'm still working on it. I at least know who the purchaser is, so I will get that to you. Okay. My, my genius plan is if you could source them for free from somewhere, you could save some money. So right. <laughs> no, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. And it sounds like they were not local, so. Okay. Um, uh, I guess that's the only question I have at this time. Anybody else? Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was my daughter's got my You're phone. I'm like, is that her? Um, <laughs> Not my pager this time. Retro. Um, okay, if nobody else pages has. Are hmm? Pages are important. I'll make sure I get a pager this time. <laughs> We're going to break out our next telephones next. Um, okay, if nobody has anything else, we can move on to the draft recommendations, which I pared down significantly this morning, so hopefully you guys like what was done with it. And I just like, I, I, did, I didn't put it on a thing. Can we put Narendra's name on it too? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, because uh, he did more of the work than I did, I think. Where is he? He's on a cruise, as well, far as I understand. <laughs> Well, uh, somehow I got on it. Larry wrote most of it to begin with, so it's, it's been a, a joint effort. So, folks, you may notice that this is slightly different than what was sent out in the emails yesterday and the week prior and the week before that. I think we did three for this meeting. Um, but Joyce did do some work. I think the background is more or less the same. Yeah, I didn't do anything Yeah, the, the bulk the background. of the changes came out of the recommendations themselves, and it was just mostly combining stuff. So take a moment and look at those and see how you feel about this. Remember, this was the recommendations that was discussed in October previously. And so they've made the changes that the committee wanted to see, hopefully. Okay. Well, Any send it to full board. Huh? Send it to yeah. full board, yeah. I just want to make sure I understand your meaning, so that we're doing the right thing. Any 
you do it loudly? I make a McGill album <laughs> staff. I make a motion that we, this committee, send this to the full board for their consideration. Do we have a second? Okay. okay. Seconded. And then you can ask for discussion. Can we discuss? Now we can talk about can we do oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, just a, a, a question, and um, I, I can't honestly say that I read this in great detail over the last week, but um, with regards to pollinators, um, we say a lot of the nice things, flowering trees, shrubs, etc. cetera. Um, one thing that if it's not included in here that maybe we discuss is uh, should we also uh, include indigenous because there's, uh, that is also likely part of the whole pollinator problem as it is with birds, with invasive species that man has introduced to the region. So um, I would also feel that we would want to be careful in one sense as to what we're putting out there in the form of pollen. What are your thoughts? I think that's a good idea that I had not considered but we I do don't have native, but I see that in there. Where is native? First, second, or third? Second. Yeah, but it would probably need to be in uh, number, number one. one. I don't. I don't know a lot about horticulture. I have a black thumb. Is is planting of non-indigenous species a, a thing that we do? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Avery Hammett, DOE. I just wanted to uh, actually punt this one <laughs> to Charlie. But we have Charlie Davis here from the Forest Service. And we also have Jim Fudge back again to answer any pesticide, herbicide questions. Um, so um, maybe Charlie could tell, we, do we plant non-native species? So that we, we try to target okay. um, indigenous stuff. Well, I mean, I guess we could put it in there just as a, so that it's on the record. Thoughts? Yeah, I don't think it's a substantive enough change that anybody seems to have a real big okay. thing about yeah. it. So let's just put it right there on number one, right behind plant and in front of pollen, just put indigenous and be done with it. Okay. Um. And number three, wasn't that a wasn't that already addressed? Recently? I thought that it was, but I wasn't 100% sure, and I thought we could talk about it. So. Is that up here, Bailey? Would great. Is there anything you could say to address that? Obviously, we're not looking for a res official response for number three, but maybe just uh, I thought we mm -hmm. had just gone through this question recently on an another recommendation. I just want to ask. Yeah, I think we talked about that last time we were here um, a little bit. I am the, the pesticide program administrator, so pretty much all of the all of the pesticides, herbicides, insecticides that are used by SRNS come through my program. The Forest Service and their applications are separate from that. So there, there's an annual review of that list to identify if there are any more bio-friendly products that accomplish the same um, tasks, if you would, compared to, to others, to a more bio-friendly alternative. We do look at that on an annual basis. So there is as much of a centralized program as can be had on the site, I think, um, considering all the entities that are there. So do we want to keep it, strike it? It never hurts to keep it only because they can just say we don't accept it and, and, or We're already doing clarify this. how it is mm -hmm. already being accomplished. But if there is a difference between what you're doing and what uh, National Forest Service is doing, then there is not technically a one single entity for the site. Well, uh, do we need to put that in there then? Because 
didn't our prior concern also have something to do with the interaction and overall dosages and things like that? I don't know that that was explicitly outlined in there because I don't have the original one. I combined two of them to make number two. Oh, okay. This is okay. Never mind. I'm slow, but I'm worth waiting for sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Can you see that one better than that one? Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. I was just I don't have an the, angle. <laughs> I have progressive lenses, so it's easy to point okay. my head that way. So the real crux of number three, if I remember the original discussions and some mm -hmm. of the came out of it, was just making sure that that at, that there were pesticides, every, somebody knew about the pesticides being applied on site and making sure that there were no gaps in the knowledge and that pollinators were taken into account in that application, right? So are between you and the Forest Service, are there any really outstanding gaps in the knowledge? Of I'll let Forest Service speak to that. I understand. Program. I would do but that too. As far as, you know, almost all of the, the I'll speak to the herbicide application because that's really affects the pollinator habitat more than anything else. And I can't give you a percentage of gallons applied, but I think the majority of the herbicides applied are going to be in facility areas where you're controlling weeds next to buildings and flower beds, and they're not necessarily weeds that would be considered good pollinator habitat. Another big use is going to be on um, some of our electrical distribution right-of-ways, and those are treated every three or four years or so. Most of those are not going to be um, uh, broadcast. We're going to target the woody vegetation, the oaks and the pines and the sweet gums and so forth that are a threat to the conductor overhead. So we're not, we're trying to do that in a way that's friendly to the species and shrub species that are pollinator friendly. So if you're putting herbicides in the right of way, that would prevent number one, wouldn't it? Prevent? Putting things in the right of ways to ex consider exploring the effects of right of way on the bees well I think the the right of ways can be managed to encourage the native pollinator species um, I think you'll get a once you control the the woody vegetation the tree species you're gonna get a something's gonna occupy the space the trees don't occupy anymore and that's gonna be your herbs and shrubs and most of those are gonna be really good pollinator species okay so it would not prohibit that? No. Okay. All right. I wanted to be an entomologist, but I'm no good at this stuff. <laughs> um, does ever anybody have anything else before we bring the Forest Service? Oh, yes, Doug. Uh, <coughs> Doug Howard Cap. I just had a question on the, uh, on, on the oversight itself. You all, um, I guess you, you, uh, use your stuff on areas in which the the, the uh, forest uh, service does not so everything they don't do you all uh, use uh, your insecticides on the the forest service uses their, their herbicide program is and I'll let Charlie speak to it specifically if he wants to is on their silvicultural activities their tree growing operations right the SRNS applications are related to our operations okay so they're mainly treating the the forest areas yes and you all are doing around the infrastructures That's and right. stuff like that the development so areas. you don't cross over into each other's territory so there's no chance of any oversaturation in any areas of your uh, insecticides or herbicides in other words we unknowingly treat the same thing twice yes, yes. No, I don't see how that could happen. Okay. All right. Then you, you police your own selves up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Does the uh, herbicides that you uh, use for treatment in the right of way areas, does that kill off like a pur purple passion flower? Would you know? I could show you a picture uh, if you like. It <laughs> could, if, there, if it were treated, yeah. What they use is um, a combination of different herbicides and it would probably kill it. Okay. Only reason I ask is uh, that specific plant, there's basically, it's uh, it's called a fritillary. It's Gold a fritillary. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, it's a, so you know all about it. Good. Yeah. Um, so it's, it only eats those plants. So we actually raise that plant in our woods, mm -hmm. uh, in the, our front yard, uh, so that we get hundreds of these uh, very specific butterflies in the area. And if we're killing off the purple passion flower, you're not going to see these. So it would be in most places it would be incidental because we are particularly on the 13.8 kV distribution lines um, we are spot treating the woody species and not spraying anything else. Okay, so it's not like a broadcast. Correct. Just a discussion among the cab would it be any of, of any interest to know pounds and gallons of site? applications or anything like that, square miles covered, acreage. I feel it sounds like they've got it under control that they're just using the habitat area or the inhabited areas around the buildings. Joyce Underwood Cab, this might be a controversial statement, but I feel like there comes a point when we gotta trust them that they're doing their job. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I mean, if the man's putting down pesticides and he knows the butterflies that may be impacted, he's obviously taking some care. Thank you. Thanks. Joyce Underwood Cab, uh, you guys, your your organization is the one that does the caps too, right? And uh, the caps SRNS like the area, does that, yes. Which is you. I'm, I'm not, I don't do the cap, but I'm SRNS. So is that I a think third you know where entity? You're going with it, so is, go it, is it a third entity or is it just still between you and Forest Stores? service, right? That, that sprays for the, because you have to spray for the insects and the plants on the cap on the area that's still under the purview of what you do, right? There's not a third yes. entity doing You're that. Correct. Okay. You're correct. That's all. Okay. <laughs> What's I think? Anybody else? Anything? Uh, I'm trying to look here. Wanted to point out because there was a lot of uh, discussion before about not telling S, uh, SRS what to do. So previously we had said study in number one and I changed it to consider exploring because maybe that's more passive language. Um, so well, while we have Jim up there, Jim, do you have anything that you're in need of? Yeah. Uh, do you have a resource need of... Uh, I don't know, something more organic or anything like that? Do you have all the resources you need to do your job effectively and not kill everything unnecessarily? <laughs> no, it, it, the program is, is, has been moving in that direction for a while and I just keep it going forward and, and try to stay on top of what the latest trends are you know, in the, the right of way management industry, for example, and how they do their vegetation management and the whole industry is moving towards an integrated vegetation management where they, they're getting away from, you know, doing a broadcast application across the width of a right of way and killing everything because of the problems it causes not only with loss of pollinator habitat, but it's generally pretty bad stewardship in and of itself with the other mm -hmm. harm that you cause with um, you kill all the vegetation, you create erosion problems that are really expensive to fix, so forth and so on. So what I'm doing is just I'm trying to keep all that moving forward bring in those, the best management practices to the surface as they emerge from the industry and, and encourage um, SRNS people that are doing the right of way management that it's actually a good thing for them to do and that it, it saves DOE money and is better for the environment. Had we previously been doing that wide application to the right of ways at any point in the recent future or past? Not in the recent past, no. No. Her, uh, so uh, in the next committee meeting, we're going to be talking about the NERP um, a 
little bit. Are any of the NERP areas actually maintained with regards to being sprayed with anything? Or they're just completely wild? Okay, thank you. So that was a nod and a yes. Okay. Thank you. Did we want to hear from Forest Service? Anybody got any questions for them? Does Forest Service have anything they want to say to us? Um, At the microphone. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, well, if, you, if you don't have anything, I don't think anybody had any questions. That's just good. if you were going to. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. The forest trees, just take out that ROI on the Forest Service. That's, that's, it's just U.S. Forest Service. Oh, okay. That's all I got. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Thank that's you. <laughs> anybody have any other questions, comments, concerns, feedback, S wordsmithing? But we could do it here now so and save ourselves the trouble. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be redone. It won't be exactly the chair that we recommend. About this, we could do it now. <laughs> no, no, no. About the wordsmithing and the, oh. and the sending it back and all the, the conversation we just had. Okay. So. Do we have a motion to vote to send it before board, or do we already do that? So now you just ask for your yeas and nays. So yeah. Yays and nays. Who who wants to send it to the full board? All Yay. Opposed. All in favor? All opposed? Did you vote? I did. Oh, I didn't see. <laughs> Don't worry, James saw it. <laughs> I did. He was very subtle, James. <laughs> Any abstains? Does Bobby get to vote? Oh, he did. Bobby, Bobby, are you still there? Oh. I am. I am in favor. Okay, just for the record. I thought she didn't come for attendance, but she could vote. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just so cloudy out. So. She was in. Right. Y'all came up with it. Huh? Y'all came up with it. We were <laughs> I, yeah. No. I. 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 I, I hey. I in a lot moment lot. of drunken stupor, are you gonna hold us to that? <laughs> I think it was the previous, um, previous member of the cab. Okay, so uh, now we can move on to public comments, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Bueller? No. Okay, seeing none, uh, move to adjourn.